Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. Thought I would do a quick video today about the identity plate and the panel end markers in Lightroom Classic. There's a lot of nuances, especially associated with the identity plate, some weird quirky things. If you don't kind of, you have to play with it to try to figure out exactly what's going on. And unfortunately, this was programmed back, I think, with Lightroom 1 and Adobe really hasn't done anything to modernize the interface. Really could do a much better job in the way they present it, as I'll get into in a minute. Panel end markers, they're pretty basic, but there's some ways you can use that that are more useful than you might think, not just about how it looks. So I thought I might go over that. You might find some ways to help with your workflow like I have by using the panel end markers. You know, some people just want to jazz up the way Lightroom looks as far as the interface. You might even be using it to show your clients their photos and be able to using it as a sales tool. So it kind of helps to kind of jazz it up. Anyway, let's start with identity plates first. Okay, first thing to understand, identity plates are used in two places in Lightroom. One, of course, is the plate at the top of your window. Typically, it comes with just this Lightroom Classic logo showing. And in this identity plate, you also have the module selector up here. One thing that makes it confusing is identity plates are also used in the printing module to add a signature or other items to the print you're making. And unfortunately, even though those are two completely different tasks and two completely different uses, Lightroom doesn't distinguish between the two. So that can cause some problems. Let's talk about the identity plate this video is intended for, which is the one at the top of your window. I'm gonna get into the other identity plate in a printing module a uh, video I'm currently in the process of trying to make right now. So there are two ways to edit the identity plate. First of all, you can go under Lightroom Classic and go right here to Identity Plate Setup, which is pretty straightforward. You can also right click up here in the top uh, panel and go to Identity Plate or Edit Identity Plate. You notice here I have a pop-up menu that selects which identity plate I want to use. Lightroom Classic is pretty straightforward. You can also use what's called an Adobe ID identity plate, which adds your Adobe ID username to that, I suppose. But what we're really interested in is how to customize that identity plate. And to do that, we just sit here and go to personalize. There are two types of identity plate that you can create. One is a style text identity plate, which you use normal text tools to create. And the other is a graphical identity plate, which you would create in a program like Photoshop, and then you would link in. Let's talk about the stylized text identity plate first. So a stylized text is just what it says. Basically, you can put anything you want text-wise here. Just uh, in this case, we'll highlight it and just type in something new. We can choose our font. So let's do Helvetica Nui, or Niu, or I have, or the heck you say that, and maybe make it light. Now, let's just add the word photographer after here just for the sake of making it interesting. And notice that I had a font size left over. That just is demonstrates what I want to do is, uh, first of all, resize this. So you'll notice it's dynamically updating at the top. And we can see that we can make it a lot larger without any problem. If we go to 36, it looks fine. If we go to 48, you'll notice that it just chops the top off. So Lightroom is not really capable of dynamically scaling that to fit the available space, something that seems like they could have fixed a long, long time ago. Anyway, we can manually type a number in here until we can see what we want. You also notice it's a little tight to the side. So I can go here and add just a few spaces to move it over and give it a little bit of room. Now, you notice when I did that, the word photographer disappeared. And that's because it basically scales within this box. You can resize this box so it's bigger and then you can see all the text. And in this case, let's say we wanted to make the word photographer a little smaller. Uh, let's go down to 36 and let's say we wanted to make it. I'm not sure why it changed my font back. Interesting. Let's go back to Helvetica Nui and light. And then let's do light italic. And then let's go here. And we're just having to do whatever we did. I don't know why it kind of just redid everything. There we go. And this is 36. Let's say let's make this 30 instead. So it's a little smaller. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, the other thing we can do if we want it is we can change the color of any letter or group of letters. So, for example, I can highlight this part and click the little color icon. And I can say I would like that kind of a gold color. Um, and just, you know, not that this is going to look good. I'm just trying to show examples. And then let's say we wanted this name, last name to be uh, maybe a blue color, kind of a sky blue color. And then, of course, we could do the same thing with the word photographer. Let's go ahead and make that uh, a little bit darker gray. And I think I can do that just by turning the opacity down a little bit so it's not quite as obvious. And that's kind of cool. Now, the next thing we can do is we can go over to the module selector and we can do the same thing. Let's first of all set it to the same font, Helvetica Nui or New or whatever. And let's just go again light. We can also customize the color of the selected module. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Let's go to 36. And we click here. This is the color that will be used for the selected module. So let's, let's, just for, let's pick a gold that's similar to that gold that we used a minute ago. And then this is the color that will be used for the non-selected modules. And let's go ahead and use that similar, that blue color, but maybe tone it down just a little bit. And there we go. So now we've totally customized our identity plate at the top. And it looks kind of cool. Now, you might be way more creative than I am at this kind of thing and do something nice. But you can see how you can customize this pretty easily with just simple text tools. One thing I'll mention really quick about this, it's kind of identity plate related. You can hide modules at the top by right clicking over here and turn them off and on. One thing that you might not be aware of is you can actually turn them all off so that your module selector goes away. Now, as soon as I press any key to get to a module, that particular module will be brought back up. For example, if I press the R key to get to the crop, you'll notice that develop shows back up. If I press G to get back to the grid, library shows back up. So they'll show back up anytime you go to a module, but if you're doing a sales presentation and you want it to look totally custom and you go to full screen mode, uh, that's really kind of a nice look. Uh, no, no indication that this isn't a program specifically made for you. And it can be a pretty effective sales tool in some circumstances. So one thing we have to be aware of is that if we go ahead up here, you notice it says custom. If we select one of these others, what we just did will be uh, taken away as we switch over and we can't get it back. So if we want to make sure we can get this one, we have to save it. If we go up here to the menu and do save as, another thing that's important is we can't save it uh, any of the names that are here. So let's say we try to save it as new one. We wanted to update new one to be this, which there should be an update down here, but there isn't. So we do save as, and we type in new one. And, oh, <laughs> apparently it's case sensitive. Let's do save as. And now you see I can't do it. I didn't realize it was case sensitive. So we have to give it a different name. One thing you can do is give it a slightly different name and then we're just going to call it demo. And then if you change it, you could. So here's demo. Let's say that we changed it. Um, let's say we took the word photographer off. And now we want to save it. What we'd have to do is call it something else, demo one. And then go and back, switch back to demo. And then we would have to delete demo, for example. So you'd have to give it a slightly different name and then, re, and then delete the old one. A little bit of a, a nuisance. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is graphical identity plates because it's even more of a nuisance there. Okay, so now let's talk about creating a graphical identity plate. Uh, basically, anything you want to put up there, you can put up there. There's a couple of caveats. First of all, it can only be 40 pixels high. It can be any length you want, but it will chop off whatever. It will not resize anything. For example, if you create an 80 pixel high graphic that you want to put up there, Lightroom, despite its amazing power with graphics, is too stupid to know that it needs to scale that down to the allotted 40 pixels. If you put something larger than 40 pixels, it will just chop the bottom of it off. And so kind of be aware. Now, this can be problematic because remember, your uh, your identity plates you create to put in your print module, those are always going to be big. They're never going to be that small because you're doing a signature that might be on a 40 by 60 inch print, but they're going to be there in the same place. I really recommend as you create it, 
interface or an identity plate for printing. You start it with a P, an underscore maybe, and you might even want to start the ones meant for the top of your window with an IP and an underscore. So you know which interface or which identity plates they belong to. They really should be treated separately by Adobe. Another thing to remember, if you create a graphic for an identity plate, Lightroom will store a direct path to wherever that's located. It will not relocate that graphic into a folder within its own system. So if you move that, it's gone. It doesn't know how to get back anymore. And that's the other thing that doesn't make any sense. Once you add a graphic to an identity plate, it really should copy that graphic into a location where it can then retrieve it. What I do is I create a Dropbox folder and all of my identity plates I store there. So if something gets messed up, they're easy to get back to. Anyway, let's go ahead and do a real simple graphic identity plate. If we just go up here and we go to identity plate, I've got one that I call AI SIG, but we're going to do it by actually finding it. Let's click use graphical identity plate, locate file. As you can see here in my Dropbox, I've got this Adobe Lightroom. And we've got this one here where I call it uh, Signature 2 PNG. Now, I'm going to hit the space bar just to preview that. And you go see it's white. You can barely see it. And that's because what you want to do with it, you want to make sure this looks good on black. And you create it as a PNG so it will look nice. Otherwise, it might look pretty weird if you have a block that's 200 pixels wide and it's white. That's just going to be a black or white blob on the top of your window. And let's go ahead and select that. And as you can see, I've got a nice little signature created by an AI website since I have a really lousy signature. Now, let me just show another one that I did. Let's locate this file. And this one is called Earthlight IP. And this, I actually used my logo from my gallery when it was open. And even though it's only 40 pixels high and the word gallery is really small, it's quite legible. So it looks uh, pretty good. If we save this and go into full screen mode, You'll see that it's kind of a nice uh, touch on the top of my window, and it looks pretty good. And in a minute, we'll show how I can take my logo and show it here in my panel end markers as well. The last thing I want to cover is you can make an identity plate as long as you want. So if you make an identity plate that's basically as wide as the monitor you're going to show it on. In my case, I'm showing it on about a 2,000 uh, pixel resolution wide monitor, then you can have a bar that goes all the way across the top. This would you'd save as a JPEG and not as a PNG. And I've got it right here. Let's just go ahead and pick that one. And as you can see, it's now a solid bar across the top, but my module selector still shows on top of it. And here, if I go to full screen mode, it's actually kind of a cool look. Now, this is not a really cool graphic. I'm not real good at graphic design, but you can see I used some, you know, different colors. I did a stroke around my text and my name, and it looks kind of different. Uh, I think the point here is there's a lot of possibilities. The key is it can only be 40 pixels high, so make sure that you either scale it up to take and then scale it down before you save it. And then all, the other key is make sure you save it somewhere you know where it's at later because Lightroom will not remember it or figure out where it moves. It does not store it internally like it should once you create it. So the other way you can control the look of Lightroom a little bit is with what are called panel in markers. Those go below the open areas of your panels, both your right and your left. I think by default, it's turned off to create a panel and marker it's much like an identity plate you'll create a graphic but in this case you'll store it at a specific location because lightroom will read those when it opens and make them available if i go to my preferences menu and i go over to my interface you'll see that i have an end marks here and i can go down to the bottom and i can go to that panel in marks folder and there are anything i place in this folder any graphic will be available Let's go ahead and close that window and let's go ahead and set it up to use the default one. You can see that it's a small flourish and this one's provided with Lightroom. Pretty small. You might want to make your own. It's up to you. First, let me use this one that I made to show how big you can make it. You'll notice that this has, at when I'm closed, I'm at the green line. So about 300 pixels is anything under 300 pixels won't get cropped. Again, Lightroom won't resize it to fit the available space. 
And if I open it up, you can see that I have up to 360 pixels. So to be safe, you probably would want to make them less than 300 pixels. That way nothing gets cropped off. But if you know you always are going to keep it at its widest, you could make it a little wider if you needed to for some reason. Let's go ahead and show a couple that I've created. I have this one here, which was my logo. And you can see it's fairly large and it kind of matches my logo at the top. I also have another one, which is a logo, which is a little smaller. I did a yin yang, and that's what I used to use. And it's kind of cool looking. I did a bigger yin yang, but I forgot to make it a PNG. It says it is, but it's really not. So that it doesn't look too cool. So you, a lot of creative things you can do, and it can be fairly tall. Notice as you, let's go ahead and put back my logo here. Let's see. Notice as you open things up, it'll move down and disappear. And so it's not a real big deal. But one thing you might consider doing if you want is using the end panel for information. For example, let me just show you one that I've done. I've gone and created a PNG that has keyboard shortcuts. And if you'll notice, I've got listed here a lot of shortcuts. Uh, one thing that's in interesting about this one it doesn't crop the end panel vertically. It will, I can scroll it no matter how long this is. So no matter what I'm doing, if I'm trying to recall a keyboard shortcut, for example, I can simply scroll down to the bottom and there they all are. Now, to make this long, I've actually doubled it up. Uh, normally, the only ones I would have are these, but I just wanted to demonstrate how you can make this really long. And so you could use this for any kind of information that you might need. You'll notice that I've only made it wide enough that even when I go in, it it's almost crops off, but you can still see them all. And you can always move it just a little bit. So that might be something you find useful. If you're interested in using this, I'll provide a link in the description to the Adobe file for both a Mac version as well as a Windows version with the correct symbols for command or control keys on it. And you can edit it, add or remove any that you like. Uh, there are some that I just don't ever remember. For example, the spot removal cue for the brush is something I'm finally getting the hang of. But what I didn't even realize so recently is when I do a spot and Lightroom will show you where it samples from, if you want to force Lightroom to sample from a different spot, you can simply hit the forward slash key and it will pick different spots. I, that's one I always forget about. And the mask tool is something that I've kind of not really realized there was even a keyboard shortcut for. So you might find this useful, download it, edit it to your heart's content. If you wanna change it and you need to get one of these symbols like a command key, control key, option key, just select and copy it and then paste it in where you need it rather than try to find it, which is what I had to do. That's actually kind of challenging. So this is a Adobe Photoshop file with a gray layer and then a text layer on top. And once you modify the text layer, you can then turn the gray layer off and export it as a PNG. I'll do a Windows one and a Mac one so you have the correct symbols. So if you'd like to customize this for your own use, uh, you're welcome to. I appreciate any feedback on this. I love to see comments. I enjoy making these videos. Don't get a lot of watches, but I actually hit the 7,000 subscriber mark the other day. I never thought I would have that many, and I'm not really trying to get to some awesome channel, but I, I, it's kind of satisfying to know that at least some people that are willing to subscribe. If you have any questions on this or if you think I forgot something, please let me know. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching. See ya.